Hey guys, my name is Caleb, and in this video, we're going to be talking about Ethereum and the stock to flow model of Ethereum. Now, a lot of people talk about the stock to flow of Bitcoin. Um, this is a very popular chart people use to kind of predict the price of Bitcoin, and it's actually really, really accurate. There's a lot of math behind it. That's actually kind of simple, but uh, yeah, it actually follows it, as you can tell very very well and this is kind of like the go-to chart for people um, to kind of watch the valuation of bitcoin but uh, for the longest time bitcoin's had the narrative of the store value and it serves pretty much one purpose and one purpose only and don't get me wrong very revolutionary um uh product that bitcoin is and what it does for you know the the world but it has one use case and that is store value and you could say even um, growth, right? It's hedging against inflation, which is very, very popular right now. And Bitcoin's going to do very well over the next, you know, 10 years. But Ethereum has multiple use cases, including store value. And I've been talking about this for quite a while on this channel. By the way, if you guys are new, make sure you subscribe to the channel um, and you stay up to date on all of the latest updates. And also hit that thumbs up button. It really means a lot to the channel. So... If you see here, uh, four weeks ago, I talked about three reasons why Ethereum's way undervalued. And at that time, uh, even though right now we're at 41, 42, nearing our all time high, at that time, Ethereum was at a uh, very modest $2,100. Okay, $2,100. And then I made the video, which I got some flack for saying that it's going to go to 3,500 very soon. And then it did. And then, um, even more recently, two weeks ago, I made an Ethereum 5100 video. And at that time, uh, recording that video, let's go back to when I recorded that, it was actually right around like $2,400, $2,100. And I said 5100 And I got even more uh, people raising their eyebrows at me, wondering why I was predicting such a high Ethereum. But I'm going to go into kind of the reason why. I'm not just throwing darts into the air. There's math behind it. There's... Uh, you know, a lot of thinking that goes into that. And the biggest thing is that I've said over and over, people are not pricing in EIP 1559. And if you don't know what that is, I've made videos about that before, but just in case you've been under a rock, EIP 1559 is going to uh, change the supply and make a supply shock to Ethereum like we've never seen before. This is the uh, supply growth over time that we've had with Ethereum. We've gone from five block reward to three block reward to now two block reward. And now with the current transaction fees, if you look right here, we're at 259 GUE at time of recording this video. If we keep on the trend of those fees, it's actually gonna level off or even be deflationary for a little bit. Now, in the title of this video, I talk about uh, with Ethereum 2.0 and EIP 1559 kind of merging at the same time, that's equivalent to what 10 Bitcoin halvings would be. And I actually mean that because, and, and quite possibly a lot more, because if you know what uh, the Bitcoin halving is, and the reason we have these stock to flow jumps is because literally uh, Bitcoin, the amount of supply that's dropping into the bucket, right? If you If you look at Bitcoin here, we see there's 18 million circulating supply, and that's that's the total amount of bitcoins in the bucket, right? And there will only ever be 21 million. And instead of you know dropping those coins uh, steadily into the bucket every four years, the amount that's dropped into that bucket gets cut in half, so that the uh, the rest, the other you know two million bitcoin that we have that's left to be. Uh, released into the supply is going to take a long time to get um, released and it's more spread out we're rationing it okay uh, with ethereum and by the way every time that happening happens we have a major spike okay because stock to flow is how many uh, years it's going to take to um, get to the amount of supply we have currently. And that's why gold is so valuable because it's of such short supply. It's very hard to mine gold, very hard to mine diamonds, oil, all these commodities. Um, stock to flow tends to be a great way to kind of watch the price of that. Now, Ethereum is about to have a supply shock like we've never seen before. And I'm gonna make that really clear again because you know, I've said that back here, I've said it here again. And I'm going to make it really clear one more time that even though we're at an all-time high, 
Ethereum is going to see a supply shock like we've never seen before because not only of, like I just said, EIP-1559, but with Ethereum 2.0, the amount of... So we have multiple deflationary uh, aspects coming, okay? I, I shouldn't even say deflationary. We have multiple things happening at the same time that are causing the supply, the circulating supply to go away. So not only that so that the current amount that's being produced is going down even deflationary but we're also seeing some of the circulating supply a lot of the circulating supply being staked because we're moving over to a proof of stake we already have 4.4 million ethereum staked into 2.0 without even being launched yet there is no uh these people who have staked into ethereum 2 have completely trusted the system because there is no um, you know, unlocking date set. Once the uh, chain is live and Ethereum 2.0 is live, then the staking uh, is one year. So after one year, you can unlock your Ethereum and you know, sell it, move it, whatever. But that's the locking time once you decide to stake after it's live. Until then, it's staked indefinitely until you know, it's live. So we have EIP-1559, the supply shortage. We have the uh current amount also getting pulled off and being you know staked at the same time creating the circulating supply and the amount on exchanges going down even further okay and that's just two there is another aspect okay now like i talked about a minute ago bitcoin has really one purpose and it does that purpose really well uh ethereum has multiple purposes we have nfts and DeFi and so many other things that are coming uh, to be built on top of Ethereum. But decentralized finance alone, if we look at the last one year, the total value locked into DeFi is nearing 86 billion. I think it actually crossed, oh yeah, 86 billion today, okay? Now, not all of that is uh, in Ethereum, but it's all done on the Ethereum chain, and that's all used with Ethereum fees, okay? And a lot of that is Ethereum. I personally have a lot of my Ethereum locked into a smart contract as well. And this is just DeFi. There's other smart contracts that lock up Ethereum as well. So, you know, combine that with the supply being completely shocked, combine that with people moving to stake their Ethereum and a lot of the circulating supply is moving over there and so much value in Ethereum is getting locked into smart contracts. And, and again, like I said, these are just, you know, DeFi and NFTs are just the one of the first two uh, use cases we have. Imagine the next four or five use cases with Ethereum that are going to, um, you know, shock the supply even more. And the circulating supply that we see, this 115 million Ethereum, is going to start dwindling down and down and down off of exchanges, becoming more rare that you can't even get your hands on it. So that's why, again, not financial advice. I talk about that on the channel a lot, but that is why I am so bullish on Ethereum over anything else because of what's coming. And if you guys haven't already, I highly recommend you read this article. Uh, goes fully into it. This is written by, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to pronounce these names, but they're here. Uh, you can read them on softmax. Uh, substack.com or just google this ethereum is undervalued right here you can just copy this in google uh it's a great article talking about exactly what i just said all these things happening at the same time and then the other one i highly recommend you read is yes i read the white paper by arthur hayes so arthur hayes is a uh <laughs> kind of has a good and bad reputation in the crypto space but he uh, made this amazing article that if you haven't read, it is absolutely a must read for any crypto investor talking about uh, where Ethereum's headed and the potential Ethereum has to overtake some of the market share for uh, regular uh, finance one, right? The old finance system. So I highly recommend you read that if you guys haven't already. And also again, like I said before, We'll check back in a couple more weeks whenever we see uh, where Ethereum's at. I definitely think that we are headed over the next four years somewhere around this, right? This is a very conservative price, and you'll understand why if you read the two papers I talked about a second ago. The market share that we're after, and Ethereum not only can take over, but most likely will, uh, is going to be insane. And uh, with all the 
uh, deflationary aspects I talked about a minute ago, the supply being completely shocked. That is why I say that both of these combined is equivalent to at least 10 Bitcoin happenings all at the same time. So when people ask, is there going to be an Ethereum flipping this market cycle? In my opinion, absolutely. By the next market cycle, I mean, it's absolutely for sure. It's, we're, we're looking like that. I mean, there are no for sures. There's no, uh, you know, uh, guarantees in, inside this space. But if we look at the data, it definitely suggests that that's where we're headed. So again, I highly recommend you guys read those papers. And if you guys have any other questions, make sure you comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you have any thoughts on your price prediction for Ethereum or what you're currently invested in, let me know also in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.